Today I'm going to show you how to create this stylized tune shader that I ended up putting on these bottles. It's not too complicated. This is what our nodes are going to look like. Thanks very much to my patrons. I went ahead and modeled a few bottles so that I have something to put the shader on. If you don't feel like doing some modeling, you can just do a collection of cubes like I've done here. And this is what the material is going to look like. I'm going to grab this light and just move it down to a little bit in front of where the bottles are. Something around here. I'm also going to bring in a second light, which I'll set as a sun. And uh, I'm just going to move it to the side there to get it out of my way. But it doesn't really matter where it is. I'm just going to angle it towards the lights, or towards the bottles, like this here. And uh, I'm going to set the strength to 3. To create the line artifact, I'm going to hit Shift A and go to Grease Pencil and bring in a stroke. Hit Tab to go into Edit Mode and A to select everything and just X to delete all the points. And just tap back into Object Mode and go over to the Modifiers panel. Select Modifier Line Art. I'll leave it on Collection for Source Type. And under Collection, there's only one option available, which is Collection. That's all of these things right here. And then Layer, let's select Lines. And then Material, we'll select Black. And this creates this line art automatically, depending on where the camera is. So I've already got my camera set up here. Uh, to do this, what you can do is just select all of these items here. I'm just going to deselect this sun. And uh, let's hit 1 on the number pad to go onto the side view, or I guess this is the front view. And then hit the delete key slash period key just to center in on everything. And then hit Control alt and 0 on the number pad. And that'll select uh, your camera to be the view that you currently have in your viewport there. So hit N to bring up this shelf. And if you want it right in the middle, just zero this X value here as well. All right, I'm going to split my screen here. And this will be my shader editor on the left. And just hit N to get rid of that shelf. Let's bring in uh, one of these materials. They're all the same, so we don't need to worry about that. You should see you know, the number here should match up with however many objects you have that material on. I'm going to hit Shift A and search for a wave texture. Just bring it in here. And while this is highlighted, uh, hit Control T. That's a Node Wrangler shortcut. So if that doesn't work, you just need to make sure you have Node Wrangler enabled in the preferences here under Add-ons. Just search, search for Node Wrangler. And you should see a check mark next to here. If it's not checked, check that. Hovering over your 3D viewport here, if you hold down Z, move your mouse up, you'll go into rendered mode. And then on this wave node, if you left click while holding down Control and Shift, it gives you a preview of what that wave node's doing. We can select different outputs from this texture coordinate node as well. I'm going to select the camera one. That actually changes the pattern on the objects depending on what angle you're looking at it from. I'm going to adjust the scale on the wave texture to 10, so it's a little smaller there. And then on the mapping node, I'm going to change the Z rotation to 132. So you just got some diagonal lines going through. I'm going to hit Shift A and bring in a noise texture. Place it here, and I'll run camera right into the vector there. And yeah, let's come out of the factor into a color ramp. I'll place that here. And I'm just going to bring the black up to 0.49 and the white down to 0.52. So it's a fairly sharp gradient there. On the noise texture, I'm going to change the scale to 17. So the frequency is a little smaller. I'm going to bring in a mix RGB, place it right here. And I'm going to run that color ramp output into the factor. And I'll plug the wave texture into color 1. And color 2, I'm going to set to white. Let's see what that's doing. It's basically this wave texture that's interrupted by this noise texture. If you look at this color ramp again, anywhere that there is black is going to be this wave texture. And anywhere there's white is just going to be the color white. I might adjust this color ramp, actually. Let's put this down to like 0.38 and this down to 0.42, something like this. Uh, I like the look of this a little bit better. Maybe we'll bring this up to 0 0.4, 0 0.43. Use your judgment. I'm going to swap this color ramp out for a map range node as well. Uh, might as well use that. So let's go point, what was it, 0 0.4 and 0 0.43, I think. Yeah, looks good. And let's pop one of these on after the wave texture as well. Maybe make it a bit closer to the middle, so maybe 0.48 and 0.51, something like that. I'm going to move all of these nodes up a little bit and grab the mapping wave texture and map range and hit Control Shift D. So we'll duplicate them, but leave them attached to uh, this texture coordinate node. 
And I'm going to make a reroute as well, just to clean this up a little bit by holding down Shift, right-clicking, and dragging through here. Just make as many as we want, just to make it more readable. On this second mapping node, I'm going to change the Z rotation to 160. And let's see what we're looking at here. It's just another diagonal line, just in a different orientation. And I'll leave the map range node as is. And I'll duplicate this map range node with Control shift d And instead of the factor output, we'll have the color output going, which is a slightly different iteration, but generally the same pattern. I'm going to duplicate this mix RGB and just do the same thing right here. So this map range is going to go into color 1. And this one here, I'm going to feed into the factor right here. I'm going to make a reroute right before this noise and then duplicate this noise with control shift D so it remains attached there. And let's come out of the factor and I'm going to change the scale to a much larger frequency. I'm going to change it to 1. I'm going to go into a map range node here. So I'll just duplicate that one. And we'll change this to like 0.46 and 0.52, something like this. And I'm going to make another mix RGB, place it right here. This is going to go into color one. This is going to go into color two. And this guy, I'm going to feed into the factor. So this is the map range node. We'll kind of adjust to get the effect that we like. And it may be more useful just to kind of use a color ramp at first. I find them just more intuitive to adjust anyway. So I'll just mimic what I've got here. So this black is going to be at 0.46 and this white is going to come down to 0.52. If we bring both these flags down, we'll get a little bit more of that second pattern. So maybe something like 0.41 for the black and 0.44 for the white. That looks pretty good. So I'll just mimic the same values here, 0.41 and 0.44. And I'll pop that on there and just get rid of this. I'm going to go to this noise texture actually and make this a little smaller. Uh, maybe something like 8. Kind of like the way that this looks here. I feed this into this uh, principal BSDF. Then I'll feed this into a shader to RGB. And then from here, I'll feed it into a color ramp. And I'll set this to constant. We can drag this down. We can see now we've got this uh, sharp gradient. And it's dependent on where this light is as well. This is basically our shadow. And if we wanted, we could just take this out. But, um, you know, it helps kind of round it out a little bit here. And I'm going to do one more thing to this material as well, which is just bring in an emission shader. And then bring in a mix shader. Place it right here. I'll run the emission shader into the bottom. Let's set this at something like 0.05 or something, fairly small, maybe 0.03. That basically makes it so that this isn't completely black. So you can see the outlines in the shadow. You could set it fairly low, maybe 0.01 is a little lower for uh, you know more contrast there. Now let's create the gradient that goes from the top to the bottom. And uh, first of all, what I'm going to do is bring in an empty. So hit Shift A over the viewport, and let's go empty. And any one of these will do. They just look different. So I'll just choose the first one there, plain axis. Let's go back to our material. And I'm going to come out of the object output here. And I'm going to feed this into a separate XYZ. Place it right here. Let's move it up here to get it out of the way and make some reroutes as well. I'm going to come out of the Z output there. And that gives us a gradient from the you know, bottom here to the top. The problem is the gradient is different for each of the objects, and it looks like this one isn't even rotated right. Apply that rotation. And so, um, you know, how do we make it so it's all the same? Well, we can use this empty right here. So I'm going to actually go down to the object right here on the bottom of the texture coordinate node, and there's this picker here, or you can just select it from here and select that empty. It doesn't really matter, but that makes it so that the empty is now the object. So you can move around and it changes the pattern on all of these all synced up. I'm going to bring in a color ramp and place it right here. And let's just test out this gradient. So I'm going to bring that you know, down to go like black, white, black. So there's an issue here. You know, it's not covering the whole range. It's only covering this tiny bottom range. So to expand that out, I'm going to bring in a map range node, place it right here. 
and I'm going to set the from max to three instead. So that brings it uh, basically to the top. We can adjust it if we want as well. You know, doesn't really matter. Maybe 3.5 would be a bit better, but three is fine for now. I'm going to reset this color ramp and the bottom flag. I'm going to enter in hex code 4D. 1D19. It's kind of a, you know, brown, red, rusty color. The top flag, that's going to be 4CA4FF. It's like a blue color there. And then uh, what I'm going to do is instead of RGB, I'm going to select HSL. And instead of near, I'm going to select far. And that basically uh, has a whole bunch of colors in between these two uh, to create an interesting gradient there. And if we wanted, we could, you know, expand this out like I was talking about. But I kind of liked all the blue at the top there. Um, you know, thought it looked nice. I want to mix this color ramp with this mix RGB right here that has those stripes. To do that, I'm just going to bring in a second mix RGB and uh, plug this into the factor. We could plug this into color one or color two. I like both effects. Uh, let's do color one for now, and I'll feed this into the principal PSDF there. If we look at the output, we can see it's still in black and white because of this color ramp right here. What I can do is actually bring in another mix RGB, place it right after that color ramp, and I'll plug this color output here into color one, and then this uh, color ramp right here. I'll feed this into the factor. So actually, this looks pretty cool. It's not quite what I meant to do, though, so let's put that right here. I'll change this to black, and let's change this to black as well. That's what I'm missing there. So there we go. Um, yeah, now we have the gradient just in those stripes. We can switch it back and forth just like this as well. This color ramp here allows you to get more or less of that gradient effect. And you can also adjust where this light is or you know how bright it is as well. I'm going to select one of these bottles here. And uh, let's create a second material here. So just on the materials panel, and if you hit this plus here, we can select that same material and just make a new version of it with this icon here. And let's just go label. I'm going to tab into edit mode. And uh, because this is a separate mesh right here, we can just hover over it and hit L for local select. It's a good way to set it up usually. And I'm just going to assign it to that second label there. Then if we go over to this mix RGB, I'm just going to change this to something different, maybe like, you know, brownish, something like that. That looks good. Here it is with the rest of the labels added as well. I'm going to go to the material properties because we can also change the color of the background. You know, here it is completely black, or we could do it completely white, or we could set up kind of a backdrop for this as well. You know, maybe just do a plane back there. Uh, looks kind of interesting too. I'm going to try moving this light around a little bit as well. Maybe let's move it more to the side. And for the sun, let's uh, change the direction of that a little bit as well. Something like more like this. Yeah, that looks kind of cool. Now it's all restricted to more of the one side. I like this effect here. And I got it by setting up these two suns back here. And again, it doesn't really matter where they are. I just like to put it kind of where it's going to be shining onto my scene to help visualize how it's going to look. And this sun here is set to 10 strength. This one's just left at 3. And then I've got this one point light with 1,000 watts just in the front there. So we've got kind of some rim lighting going on. So hopefully you can see how you can change this around quite easily. You know, if you change this color and then mix RGB to you know a different color, it's going to change the main color in that bottle. And you can also swap these back and forth. And so, you know, now it's a uh, black uh, light source with this gradient as a shadow, which is, uh, you know, quite interesting as well. We can change this again here to whatever color we want. And we can change the influence of that with this right here or the light sources as well. So, you know, a lot of stuff to change up and be creative on in this one. Okay, that's it for today. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.